Hey guys, this is David. And Boki. <laughs> from Gigi's Fabric Shop, home of Juki Junkies. And today we're going to be going over a topic that I think everybody's going to really enjoy. What is the best bag making machine? And, you know, that's going to be the title of this video, but that's a very aggressive title because really, in, in reality, it's there's a lot of the best bag making machines out yeah. there, right? It's not just one. There's right. not one machine that fits everybody's needs, right? right. So. In this video, we're going to really break it down and show you what really is the best for you, mm -hmm. not so much the best machine in the world for bag making because there's right. just not that machine out there. So right. um, let's go ahead and jump into it. Three things that you're going to want to think about when you're looking to purchase that next machine. So me and David kind of sat down and brainstormed like what we thought mm -hmm. we help people with on a daily when they call us and are like, hey, I'm looking for a bag making machine. This is what I need and what I'm looking for. So the three things you're going to want to consider is the first one being what machines do you already have at home? Like what are you going to be adding to the collection that that machine does that the other ones don't do? The next one's going to be? Budget. Yeah, Budget's that's a big one. definitely a big one because yeah. I mean, just like cars and just like diamonds, there is a lot of different factors yeah. into what what fits you, what right. product fits you. I mean, what yeah. can you afford? There's, you know, there's machines that go up to thousands and thousands <laughs> yeah. of dollars, and there's machines that are like five, six hundred bucks yeah. that might work They're for right you. They're right at a thousand. So, so it, it just really does depend, and we really respect that factor when it comes down to deciding what machine you guys want because. We, our goal is not to sell you the most expensive machine. Our goal is always to put you on the right machine because at the end of the day, if you're happy, we're happy, everyone's happy, right? Yeah. And then the third thing is gonna be, what's your end goal with this machine, right? So you gotta think like, I'm, I don't want this machine just for right now. Yeah. I need it to do like, also this in the future. Like, what are your ambitions and your goals with this Almost machine? Almost like you're buying a house. Yeah. It's like, I'm not just gonna go buy a house and then a year from now I have to go, oh my gosh, we just had four kids and we need a and bigger house. And we got two bedroom house. So you <laughs> kind of have to think ahead of time when yeah. you're buying a machine too. You yeah. want to think of what's my future gonna be mm -hmm. with this with this investment because it is right. an investment. Um, you want to make sure that's gonna fit your needs, not just tomorrow, but for many years to come because right. machines last 15, it lasts years, a long time. You know, they can last for longer yeah. than that even if you keep good care of them. So yeah. that is really the three things that you want to first go over is right. what you already have, your budget, and where you see yourself going in the future. Yep. Um, and so, write it down. Like, make notes for yourself. Take some pros and cons. And throughout this video, too, especially if you're in the market for a brand new machine, write stuff down. I mean, just take in all the information that we're saying. And if you, of course, have, you know, narrowed it down a little bit and need that extra help, feel free to pick up the phone and give us a call. Um, and we'll, me or David or Gigi or Kristen, we'll sit with you and talk with you about what you need and what we think is the best fit for you. So Kind of do what this video is about to do, yeah. but on the phone, personalized. A little so more personalized. If you can't decide on your own, then... Yeah. Feel free to reach out. Feel free to reach out. So there's like three categories of machine um, that you know you start looking at when you're trying to buy a machine. You have computerized machines like the Juki DX7, the F600, the NX7, DX4000, and then you have the TL machines, which is you know the TL2000, yeah. 2010, TL18, TL15, TL98, yeah. TL, TL, TL. <laughs> the there's list goes tons on. Tons of TLs. Really, it comes yeah. down to. Almost all of them are mm -hmm. very similar, so we'll just yeah. categorize them all into one category when we talk about TLs. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's other brands out there as well. Um, one of our other favorites would probably be the Janome HD9. That's right. Yep. Um, it's a really strong competitor with the TLs. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, there's other brands out there. I don't really. What, what, there's a brother that's I think a mechanical, there's a brother or something, yeah. So mechanical meaning like a machine that just does straight stitch, it has no computerized components to it. Semi-industrial. Um, Semi-industrial, yeah. yeah, exactly. And we have a comparison video on this um, on the TL, so you guys can watch that to, to really narrow down the differences because there are such small differences yeah. between the TLs. Um, and then, of course, that last category would be the industrials. And yes. that's a very big category. And that's like when you get your big girl, big boy pants on. So. And you may have already yeah. bought a TL. And yeah. you may have already bought a computerized machine. And, and when you're looking at that industrial, mm -hmm. that's probably when you're at the peak of your semi-industrial machine. Right. So you're going, okay, what machine is going to be the best bag making machine for me now that I've exactly. already mastered all the domestic machines, right? Right, yeah. Or you might be the person that is got an F300, an F400, or a DX7, and you're struggling with the heavier materials, and maybe the TL is the jump for you. Right. So we kind of want to just break down what 
machine mm -hmm. you're going to want in the position that you're in. Exactly. So we'll start off probably with like the computerized, the computerized people that yeah. maybe are just getting into sewing and right. want to do bag making, but they also exactly. have other needs they want to do. Computerized machines are very, very versatile. They're not extremely powerful machines, okay? So they're not like the TL machines where they're going to be able to push through lots of layers like you'll find in bag mm -hmm. making, but it's going to be really ideal for the person who just wants to like dip their toes into bag making. Right? Like you want to be able to do your quilts, you want to be able to do your apparel, you want to be able to do some bags every now and then. You know, you're a very versatile type of sewer and you don't have maybe one necessary thing that you want to focus on right now. Um, usually the machine that I recommend for my bag makers in the computerized world is going to be like the DX7 or the NX7 or the DX4000. Those machines have some like elevated advanced features to them, which we're going to put all the the comparison videos yeah. in the description below because we have a lot. At least for the three categories. Yeah, for the three categories yeah. so you guys can watch that. But those are really nice machines for the people who want to have a variety of stitches. You have fonts, you have buttonholes, you have blanket stitches, you have um, decorative stitches, you can free motion quilt on those type of machines. So on that machine category, it's a little bit of everything, lots of bells and whistles, very, very big umbrella that you can do mm -hmm. on it. It doesn't really have the drive to do the bags like more often than not. Um, something that Gigi always asks is like- What materials you're working yeah, with? Yeah, what kind of materials are you working with and like what percentage of your sewing is bag making? Yeah. Like if you're more than 50% bag making, then you might wanna consider going to, to a, TL. a TL because that machine drives better or on that. Kind of touching that too is if, if this is the machine, you're clicking on this video because obviously you want the best bag making machine. Right, right? yeah. So <laughs> it's it's, if you're looking for a bag making machine but you want to stay in the computerized category, the machine we would probably recommend for you is a DX7 yep. and above, which would be DX7, DX2000, DX3000, DX4000, and NX7. NX7. Yeah. All those have very big price differences. Yeah. The reason we're recommending the DX series line is because you're getting that floating function, which mm -hmm. gives you that thicker uh, or higher lift on your foot for sewing over heavier materials. Yep. Plus, the motors are a lot more they're, powerful they're than the F series yeah. models. Exactly. So, that would be the bag making machine, the best bag making machine in the computerized yeah. category would be really the DX series and above. And above, for sure. Um, because they're gonna provide that power and mm -hmm. they're gonna also provide you with the with the functionality of a computerized machine, which is all those beautiful yeah. stitches, the pivoting feature, and exactly. all the other things that you might be doing in the sewing world. Exactly. So that's really honestly like, if you're just getting into sewing, you wanna do a little bit of bag making, you're gonna be sewing something like some of these bags back yeah. here where it's mainly cotton materials, it's nothing like Cotton canvas, or the anything occasional super heavy. faux leather, you know, yeah. cork, that's fine. You're that's totally, totally going to get away with it and you're going to be happy. But if your sewing now is like 60, 70 percent bag driven and you have a machine at home that does your decorative stitches already, that's why the first question was what machines you already got, right? Because if you already got a machine that does the decorative stitches, why are we leaning into another decorative stitch machine yeah. if you need something more powerful? So now we're powerful? looking at the mechanical side. Exactly. Which so now we already kind of went over the computerized. You, yeah. You've, you know, you may have you just stepped that. into it, sewing, and you wanted yeah. to computerize, or now you have a computerized and you're looking for the best bag making machine mm -hmm. for your next move, yeah. which would be the TLs, the TLs, or which the is, HT9, or the or HT9, right? Any of the mechanical machines, right? We our best seller here. I was going to say <laughs> our best seller for sure. And we do sell the HT9, Janome HT9. We yeah. we don't do as many videos on that machine, yeah, because we just haven't had time quite honestly yeah but we but do no hate love, to that machine yeah, that machine we love is, it. We is love really both. great too and and when we talk mm -hmm. to customers we'll always kind of feel out the scenario of when we think that one machine is better than the other for them, um, yeah. so maybe one day I know David's really wanted to do a video like that so maybe one kind day we'll do a little comparison not competitive but just like trying to understand really the differences the pros um, to each there's pros to each yeah. they're both great machines exactly um, but let's go over what the mechanical machines are going to offer to the people that are with a computerized machine and they want to do bag making. So right. some of the things that the TLs have is they have a lot more power because instead of having to put all that all that power from that motor into all the different features such as decorative stitches right. and moving different all the components buttons and, and all the buttons and all the little electronic things because right. that motor powers all those different functions. Right. So it limits your power. Mm -hmm. The straight stitch mechanical machines is literally one motor for straight stitch only. So literally. that function has all the power. Yeah. So it has just a lot more power. It also has a lot more features to offer for heavier sewing, such as the thick throw right. plate. It goes up to a size 18 needle. Right, 18 um, needle. That's a big advantage. Computerized is only 16. Mm -hmm. So bigger needle, industrial style threads. Yep, you can go up to a tech 70 thread. So you're right. going to be able to get away with putting that top stitching on your bags. That's mm -hmm. a little bit more thick and industrial looking. It kind of yep. gives your bag a more, you know, 
I guess more of a pop to it or something. So. Yeah, it's just it's just more decorative. You know, the top stitch, you're gonna be able to use thicker materials. So naturally with thicker materials, you're gonna wanna use thicker threads, right? It's just kind of like that combo package. So you'll be able to have that opportunity here. And then if you wanna get down to like some nitty gritty things that are really nice about the TLs is the feed dog system is different. It mm -hmm. has that straight stitch feed dog system. They're like a diamond cut point. And the bobbin case actually goes in from the side, which is very common to like our industrial style machines. That makes the machine almost virtually jam proof. Okay, like yeah. that type of style is, it's, you almost have to try to jam it. Okay, it's, it makes it very, very jam proof. And it's so. very hard to jam a TL. Very hard, yeah. yeah. You would have to throw a lot of material underneath that foot before that machine said, nope, yeah. I don't want to go through it. Exactly. So the mechanical machines are definitely going to be a major step up for your computerized sewers. Absolutely. Or if you're just getting into wanting to do bag making mainly, mm -hmm. mechanical machine's a great machine to jump into, yeah. especially if you can you know, not have yeah. decorative stitches. And you're not maybe doing it like a full-time business. You're doing it, you know, here and there. You'll sell your occasional bag. Um, mm -hmm. You're testing the waters out. You know your end goal is I don't want to make this a business. I want to keep this purely hobby. Yeah. I don't want to do um, leather. I don't want to work with real leather. Although I do have customers that work with a very light, pliable, pliable leather. Leathers. And that's just fine too. Mm -hmm. But like their goal was never, I don't want this to be a full-time business. It's just purely hobby. I still want to be mobile with the machine, travel yeah. around with the Lightweight. machine. You know, very easy to for travel relatively with. compared to a com, you know an industrial and, machine, and very affordable too, and very affordable. So yeah. you it, can get into a TL two thousand for a very very affordable price, and absolutely. then you can go up to a TL eighteen, which I'm sure you guys will watch that comparison video and yeah. the link in the description because we really go over all the differences yeah. in the TLs. Watch that. Very the helpful. TL eighteen is definitely the most popular bag making machine because yeah. it has that floating function to mm -hmm. it. Um, but another thing to note with the mechanical machines too is. You, you, you're not really limited to just bag making with That's the TLs right. either. Right. It, it just has that power that you can do amazing bag making yep. with the machine, but also you can do two layers, three layers of quilting. You can do free motion quilting. Yeah. I have a customer that throws this on a, on a, on a frame and yeah. actually quilts quilts. That's and right, she's like, like on the cutie frames? She said she does over 100 quilts a year with her, with her TL. And <laughs> yeah. she never gets it clean. She does Literally. it on her own. She Literally. brought it in for the first time and I cleaned it and I was like, it's very dirty, but that right. is impressive that you do that many quilts and you've never had an issue. So yeah. they're very reliable, just very simple machines. Very versatile. They just only do straight stitch. So mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta evaluate. We always say like there's we always have the perfect pair. So if you have a computerized machine at home, adding a TL is gonna kind of give you that perfect balance because she can do everything, right? But it can't do yeah. the zigzag and the fonts and the buttonholes, but it's going to do everything and it's going to do it really, really well because it's very strong. Correct. And you can throw it into a table and, and have right. a nice flat surface and with it. And travel with it and, and whatever. Another plus to the TL, and like I said, there is the Genomi HC9, so if yeah. you have questions on that, Just think you can that we're talking about us. that too. In we're this talking about both, <laughs> but one plus specifically to the TL yeah. and specifically to Juki brand in general is you have an awesome support group, Juki Junkies, which That's has right. pretty much everything about Juki is on this YouTube channel. Yeah. And on top of that, our website is geared directly towards Juki. So right. finding accessories for this machine and yep. understanding what goes with this machine, we make it extremely simple for you guys. Yeah. And we really, we, we, we know this machine very well. So yeah, all of obviously. our out-of-state customers, <laughs> when they give us a call, 99% of the time, we're, yes. we're able to... 99.9% .9 of the time, I'd say, we're able to fix their issue or fix their Always. warranty issue if mm -hmm. there is one Yeah, and, and get it sorted out instantly. What would you say? About like 80% of our customers are everywhere out of state? Yeah, probably 80%, probably maybe even maybe 85% even, of yeah. our customers are out of state. So, so. that's something that you're thinking about in deciding a machine, you know, we're always... I, we always get that where it's like, yeah. well, what do I do? Like, I'm not in Florida. Like, what am I going to do if I need your guys' help? Let us ease your mind. If you call us, one of the same three or four people will always answer the phone. Yeah. And we're always here via email, text, call. We'll make things right. People make are sure. shocked. They think that we have a warehouse of employees calling and picking up phones. <laughs> we but really don't. You guys call and it's like, oh, hey. And they're like, wait, Let me get I know your in. voice. Or, exactly, yeah. Video. Or they're like, wait, is this Bogey? And we're like, yeah, it's I us. was just watching you on YouTube. <laughs> so Those are always so fun. <laughs> you can kind of rest assured that you're going to be helped out with yeah. any of these machine purchases of course. for your bag making or sewing needs. So now that so, we've kind of gone over the TLs, there's a lot more us. to go into them. So if you guys do have questions, call us. Call we've already us, said that. Call us, for sure. For all these categories. We're keeping it kind of vague, but just yeah. trying to get things rolling in your mind. So there's maybe some things that you haven't thought about before. You're like, wow, that's actually mm -hmm. a really good point. I didn't think about that. You know what I mean? So yep. that brings us to the last final 
you know, step in your journey of bag making would be upgrading to an industrial style machine. Correct. And yep. we did do an industrial video where we kind of talked yeah. about what to consider when you're watching an industrial. So I would watch that too, it. especially if you're teetering between like a TL and an industrial, because yeah. it's, it's kind of tricky sometimes to decide between the two. Um, and the reason being is industrials are industrials for a reason. They're yeah. made to be in a warehouse and there's a person that sews that same project a yep. hundred times or 300 mode. times a day. And that's all they do. They don't yep. switch back and forth from free motion quilting to yeah. bag making to applique right. work. It's just a one purpose machine. Right. So when you're looking at that industrial machine, you're also looking at one machine for one purpose, yep. which means that if you're just getting into bag making, it's probably not the machine for you because right. Lack of you want to do multiple things yeah. and you don't really want, you can't just sew super thick layers every single time you sew a bag. You're going right. to go through two or three layers sometimes. Your lining is going to be cotton, two mm -hmm. layers of cotton and industrial machines just can't do that. That's just... Too That's much. the misconception with industrial <laughs> machines is that people think, oh, industrial is the way to go because it can do everything. Yeah. When really it just, this machine has like a wide spectrum, right, of things it does. Yeah. Industrials focus on just specializing on one part of that spectrum. Mm -hmm. So, you know, something to consider. I like to relate it or compare it to trucks. So a uh, pickup truck, a half or a full size pickup truck, you can kind of tow the family around. You can go on the weekends. You can right. have fun in it. You can go yeah. off-roading. You can just drive every day. You can tow day. a big trailer. Right. And then their industrial is a semi truck. Sure, you can kind of tote the family around in it. You can kind of tow yeah. a small trailer in but it, you're not but gonna it's drive not going to do it very it. well. You're not going to drive to work in it. Yeah. And it's overkill for everything below that exactly. one purpose of towing a big trailer, yeah. right? That's another great way of putting it. Another so way of seeing it. for the industrials, that's kind of where we're at with that. The industrial is probably the best bag making machine for the super heavy bags when you're sewing right. those super thick layers or like even real upholstery leathers. exactly real you leather know? definitely if you're gonna if your goal is to play with real leather and really tap into that world you're definitely gonna want to go industrial or you're Just sewing over some a lot of vinyl with um, leathers and we see a lot of people out there that are sewing tons of just clear vinyl and really thick layers of that stuff. Yeah. And that's when those Lots industrials vinyls, with the yeah. walking foot really come into play. Cause yeah, it's a sticky fabric. It's a very, mm -hmm. it's not that it's a dense fabric necessarily per se, it's just a very sticky, hard to work with fabric. And when you start putting a lot of layers together, it gets hard it's to hard feed that through. It's hard for it to feed evenly. Yeah. So that's when you want to start looking at industrials when mm -hmm. possibly, most of the time industrial people, I would, I would almost say what, like 90% of the time you probably have a TL or you probably have a machine. Right below your industrial to do the really things great companions into yeah to, to work your way up into the heavier Absolutely. materials yeah and most of the times even if you were just hey i want to do bag making with leather yeah you might just be able to directly to jump into an industrial and that's what something we were talking but, about we were like unless you specifically know i want to do upholstery i want to do bag leather bag making then in that instance we would Say put you on an first. industrial because yeah. it just makes sense and then maybe down the road you might yeah. want to buy a semi-industrial smaller machine for your lighter weight yeah, materials really great companions kind of help out. i always tell people never look at a tl as an, like something you're going to grow out of and you're like oh my gosh i spent this money on that machine now what yeah it's such a good investment it. it's such a good companion to you know just have with your industrial machine mm -hmm. or really any machine yeah so you'll always have it around and even if you yeah. You, you 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 buy the TL, you sew a ton of bags, and you go, wow, mm -hmm. I really want to start doing leather. I really want to start doing super super thick vinyls. With and you can tap layers. into that. You can then tap you can, into that. Then you know, you can go up to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, kind of a vague topic to talk about, but we just wanted to kind of get you guys thinking and, and the thought process behind how mm -hmm. you decide. So me and David were like, well, there's not really one machine. And one other thing too, let's go a little bit more in depth on the industrials before we close out. I think that. One thing to think about for the industrials when you look at the best industrial for bag making, uh, mm -hmm. we don't really have a video of ex specifically this topic on our YouTube channel yeah. because we don't really have every single industrial for us to play with at the shop. Right. So we're not going to tell you that the 1541S is the best for everything. Depends on every person. There's yeah. different people that like to have the cylinder arms, the Juki cylinder arms for bag making as yep. well. Um, but we have found that the 1541S on our website on JukiJunkies.com is seems it's to be the most popular. And we get the best feedback with that machine because mm -hmm. it's got that triple feed walking foot system, yep. which for you guys, if you don't know about it, it's a walking foot, but also the needle is actually yeah. moving. It's and literally moving the like materials. wiggling. It's moving. So you never have inconsistent yeah. sewing. It's really like dragging the fabric it's, through. It's pretty cool. So yeah. that's usually the first machine we, we tell people about after the TLs. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to kind of watch videos on these machines, so you have a little homework to look at. 
the 1541S would be the option that we'd probably suggest. Sometimes the 1181. And Oakla Roots has the 1541. So that's a great that. person to watch mm -hmm. and really see what she's making and be like, well, that's kind of what I'm making. Yeah. Maybe that's what I need. And you our know? next resource for you guys would probably be go on Juki Junkie's Facebook group. Oh, yeah. We 100% have on Facebook. tons of people that use Juki machines for bag yeah. making. And if you just post on there and tell them your needs, they will comment down below. Yeah, they'll show you what they're making. Yeah. With what machine they're using. Right. So you can be like, wow, that, yeah. that's exactly what I want to do. And the cool thing about that group is it's tons of members. There's over 20,000 members. <laughs> it's free. Yeah. We filter everybody that goes into it so yeah. there's no spams or anything that's. Try to keep it a healthy bad. environment, mm -hmm. you know. So answer the questions when you join so you can actually join in yeah. that group. But definitely join that group. Um, Subscribe to our channel because we're always posting things and we're mm -hmm. always open to more suggestions. So in this com in this video, feel free to comment down below something you guys would like to see, especially if it's surrounding this bag making category. You're yeah. like, I don't know what to do. Um, maybe comment down below what machine you're using uh, for your bag making and tell us what you work with just to kind of help those other sewers out there who are like, I don't know what to do. I'm sewing on this, 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 and what machine do other people have? So Or comment down where you're at in your bag making career Yeah. and ask the questions you might have for because sure. we could always reach out to you on the comments. That's right. But if you you know want to talk to us a little bit more fast, you can always send us an email at sewingmachines411 mm -hmm. At gmail.com. That's yeah. sewing machines plural 411 at gmail.com or give us a call at 813 661 9000 between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's right. And if that doesn't work, <laughs> send Gigi a text or a phone call that's at right. 813 376 5015. And that's seven days a week, 24 7. Yeah, she she's, has no limits sometimes. Yeah. She'll that's be her at cell phone. dinner, she'll be canoeing, <laughs> she'll be grocery shopping. I mean, get send your us hair a text done. if we don't pick up that phone because <laughs> yeah. we could be. She could be sleeping. Yeah. She could be canoeing. Yeah, exactly. She could be <laughs> sewing. But so. there's a lot of ways to reach out to us. So make sure you guys like and subscribe to mm -hmm. our channel. Make sure you like this video. Share it with your friends. Share it to your page. Um, and of course, just subscribe to our channel because we're posting videos every Sunday. Lots of shorts have been coming out. So check those out too. Lots of helpful things. Yes. And thank you so much for watching this video. And we hope to do more little videos like this. I actually really enjoyed this a lot. Yeah. This and was it, really good. We literally did not cut one time. No, it was so, so good. That it was, was pretty so smooth. good. I we're love like, that. We're like, should we write a script? And I'm like, let's just go no, for it. No, it always goes like yeah. this. So, so we did good, I think. I like it. Let you guys know let us know. <laughs> See you guys. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah, that went nice. I think that went so good.